I'm Amy from Doodlebog Designs. Sometimes when I make craft projects using fabric, I want my fabric to look old. There are several different ways that I use to age my fabric. Today in this video, I will show you some different ways that I use to make my new fabric look old. I'm going to start with this piece of red check. When you buy new fabric, you'll notice sometimes it feels like it has some kind of a coating, a sizing on it. And so the first thing that you want to do when you have a new piece of fabric that you want to make look old is to run it through a cycle in your washer and dryer. This will take the sizing off of the fabric and it also will age it just a little bit. As you know from washing your clothes, as you wash them over and over again, they do tend to fade. So this is a good first step. So I cut off a piece of this red and then I ran it through the washer and dryer and I did run it on hot. I just ran it through with some towels and there's not much difference after one washing. There is maybe a slight fading. This is the unwashed and this is the wash. And it definitely did ravel the edges a little bit, which adds some age look to it. Now, if you just want to have a little piece of fabric to make a bow around something and you want it to look old, one of the easiest things you can do is to tear the fabric. I'm going to use my scissors to start a cut right here. And then I'm just going to rip the fabric and I'll get that selvage off of there. And then just cut another piece again using the scissors to start it gives you a nice aged looking ribbon and you can ravel it some more if you want you can just pull out the strings along the edges with your fingers and get it even more ravelly looking I'm going to use some sandpaper. I have here some sanding blocks and it is 80 grit, 120 grit, and 220 grit. I don't remember if I got these at Dollar Tree or Menards, but you can find them at most home improvement stores or hardware stores. So I'm going to start with the 220 grit, which is the finest, and just do a little bit of sanding. You can definitely see how that has kind of worn that down a little bit. Then I will do the same thing in the middle here with the 120 grit, which is just slightly coarser. can see some of that dye from the fabric is coming off onto the sanding sponge and it's just making it look more faded. And finally then I will use the 80 grit. So you can see how the three different types of sandpaper made a difference to the fabric. I'll show you in comparison to the original fabric. You could use a knife or a razor. I've got a cutting board underneath here so I don't damage my table. I'm just going to run the knife across the edge of the fabric and I'm going to press kind of hard to Try to wear some thin spots into the fabric. If you're doing this for a project, it might be beneficial to 
go ahead and either cut the pattern out or at least trace the pattern onto the fabric first and so you know where the different elements are going to be and you know where it would look good to have faded pieces. For instance, if you were making a doll's coat or shirt, you would maybe want to have more fading and more wear around the buttons and around the sleeves. So here I've just really concentrated on this one spot to try to age it a little bit. You can see how if you were to work at it even harder, you could even get it down to where you're very threadbare. Another way to get a threadbare look on your fabric is to rub it on some rough concrete. Here's the piece of fabric after I rubbed it on the concrete. You can see it even made some holes here and really made some thin spots so you can compare it to the unaltered piece here and this is the one that i used the sandpaper on if you wanted to add a little bit of age by adding some coloring to it you can use some ink pad i'm just going to put some of the ink on a rag and then I'm going to rub it onto the fabric. If you wanted an even more darkened look, you could try using some shoe polish. Got some brown shoe polish here. I'm just gonna dip my rag in it and I'll rub it onto the other side of this. You can really see that that adds quite a bit more color dirt look to it than the stamp pad does. And this method you could use after you get a project finished even to add a little bit of color to it. And if you want you could also use some brown craft paint or antiquing wax. Just do it in the same manner and just use a rag and brush it on or you could even paint it on with a paintbrush. Another method of aging fabric is to use tea or coffee dye. I will compare here using tea, regular coffee, and instant coffee. So I have made my tea just as I would normally make tea. And I have my piece of fabric that I have got wet and then wrung the excess water out of it. I'm going to use a piece like this and then I'm also going to use just a piece of muslin so you can really see how the different dyes affect the fabric. I'm gonna put that in and let it set. My water is still hot. This is the coffee, just the regular brewed coffee. And I'm going to put each piece of fabric in the coffee. This is the instant coffee. And I did make it slightly stronger than what the directions on the container call for. The stronger you make it, the darker your fabric is going to turn out. I'm just going to let all three of these sit for a little while. After they've been in the water for a while and the liquids are cool, I just take them out and squeeze them and then set them on a towel to dry. If you want the fabric to have a very even look in the dye, you want to spread it out flat to dry. But if you want it to have more variations in the coloring and some darker spots and lighter spots, then you want to leave it wrinkled up while it's drying. I have one last way that you can tea dye or coffee dye your project. Take a tea bag and dip it in some hot water and just get it to where it's wet and then place the tea bag onto the piece of fabric. And you can see that it just kind of spreads out. And so it will have a darker spot when you get finished and then it will be lighter around it. You can do that in several different locations on your fabric. And as needed, you can dip it back in the water to get more water. 
The pieces that I tea and coffee dyed are dry now, and so I wanted to show you the finished product. This one is the one that I took the tea bag and just dabbed it in different spots. And you can see it really creates a darker stained look right where the tea bag was, and then the tea kind of spread out. So it has a lighter stain as you go out from the middle. It creates a nice look of stains. This is the original unstained muslin, so it still has much the same coloring as the original, but it just has spots of staining. A very controlled way that you can add some age to your fabric. Here is the colored piece that I did the same way. You can see again, it just has some stained spots every place that I put the tea bag, and this is the unstained. So here we have the ones that I dipped in the tea, and as you can see, it really changed the color and made it quite a bit darker than the original muslin. And it made the red fabric also quite a bit darker. Lighter color in the fabric is cream, and it really turned it to more of a tan color. These are the just plain coffee dyed pieces. Again, you can really see on this one here that because I left it all wrinkled up when I let it dry that it really left some dark spots in places. And the same is true on this. And then lastly, I'll show you the two pieces that I use the instant coffee on. The instant coffee makes everything grungier. So I lined them all up here so you can see. I started with the plain tea over here and the coffee here and the instant coffee here. And then I have the undyed on the top and bottom here. So you can really see the difference that it makes using the different dyes. This is definitely the lightest and then it gets darker. And this creates the grungiest look with the instant coffee. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe below. I'll see you next time. Bye.